Hello there and welcome to Heart Explained Therapy where we are going to find out why we cry. Now, unfortunately, the scientific evidence of the process is based on a psychological conclusion. Now, this is very, very outstanding and uh, important because usually they have a scientific reason that bypasses psychological behaviour because psychological behaviour is almost unmeasurable. However, they have linked the crying natural instinct of a human being to a psychological factor. Now, there's also two important aspects of crying. You can cry when you're sad and grieving in emotional pain. You can also cry when you're absolutely amazed. When you're overcome with that meeting of someone you haven't seen for years or that surprise birthday party that you have or just some act of kindness that's made you feel emotional. Now this is so outstanding to do a simple video based on crying that brings in two of the most important factors about being human. The ability to cry through pain and suffering and love and um, compassion I suppose and connection. Now what would be going on in these environments your body would feel a physical emotion and like I said recently about the video where we laugh at someone falling I believe our cognitive brain has to produce a mechanism to counteract the initial feeling and then we come to the crying it produces crying to release that cognitive energy and how many times either way when you have cried do you feel that little moment of euphoria afterwards you can actually feel like you've had a huge intake of uh, almost something that seems uh, on a smaller scale but sort of psychedelic experience with you, you, you release something and feel better. It's like the release of the first chemicals, the endorphins and the um, chemicals produced in the natural flow of tears, then gives you a sort of uh, cognitive boost, a chemical production of happiness, uh, which is released of the emotion, brings you a side effect of a good feeling it's you have felt better rather than stored up loads of emotions and you don't cry and you're very hard and bitter your heart is so compressed with all this crap and you know those people are we've seen it with mental health now mental health more men are committing suicide and having mental health problems they're not known for being crying we come from a generation where we're not supposed to cry as men and it's very bad for you and it's not good to not produce the cognitive response that was natural so we cry over sadness and pain and love and joy this is a very great way to highlight the whole sort of cognitive mind at work you are this sort of animal interaction this beautiful being whatever terminology you use to describe yourself and you have the capability of reacting now if you are very fortunate you have learned specific ways of naturally reacting which I would say are right i.e. something sad happens you cry that is perfectly okay if you hurt yourself and you cry 
that is perfectly okay. I see a lot of children fall over and you don't want your child to cry. Remember, they're releasing a cognitive sort of a reaction based on a process that their body is designed to actually do. Tears through joy and tears through pain are a perfect process. Don't intervene that process. Now, I think that where we get all the trouble from in the world that we see externally is that we are also trained to suppress these natural feelings which means the brain says cry and you overpower your own mind and say no not today boom you bury it you push it down and it becomes now a trauma that in 10 or 15 years time when enough egoic things are collapsing around you you'll go to the doctors and they'll say that you have now developed PTSD from your experience and you'll realize that in fact it was a simple little grieving process that you had to do 15 years ago and that's how easy and simple it is to see your own mind that's how it works you are just a process that you don't know how to naturally be. You do not know how you as a process work. And one of the things that I often hope that would happen is that we educate children and other people how to be a human being. This is not just the deep level awareness that you can get to where everything's an illusion and this sort of part of life is almost regardless not needed but the the basics of crying the basics of releasing cog cognitive uh, sort of systems via emotions these are things that we just don't know we don't learn it's not we can see 17 memes a day on coronavirus but not one meme about how your brain mind body physical sort of cognitive behaviours in yourself work. Now this is far crucial than the other side effect that we have, the suppressive side effect of humour, dancing, music, distractions, TV, that block out the first process which is you being you. So this was a simple video to explain why we cry, but quite Remarkably, by explaining how we cry, you're explaining human in a very natural, sort of beautiful expression of life. That unfortunately, we grow up to suppress, hide and discourage in other people. When it's actually the very, sort of beautiful, artistic instinct that makes us who we are, not just the conscious being or the uh, deep awareness of a godlike being, but a very beautiful part of an organic sort of system that can thrive in perfect harmony if we only knew how the process worked.